Hello and welcome to Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. My name is Kathy Duplantis and I'm so glad that we're, we're gathered together today to study God's Word together. I love what God is doing in these studies and we're going to go deeper today than we did last week. This is our fourth lesson this month on talking about what God is doing to help us to have great expectations. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we know that we're united in faith, that we're two or more are gathered in your name, that Lord, even though I'm here by in the studio and there's somewhere else, we're gathered together in your name. And because of that, you're in our midst and you're going to help us to understand your word and to go deeper and to receive exactly what we need to grow stronger in you. Lord, I pray for your anointing to rest on every word that's said and every Thing that's heard. And Lord, I thank you for a supernatural utterance to, to know exactly what we need to hear today. We expect to hear from heaven. We expect to apply what we learn. And we pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we have so much to be grateful for. God is such a good God. He's given us his word. So we're not just here on the earth. He created us and just didn't leave us alone. He sent us his word so that we would know how to react when situations come against us. And we're going to look at that again today. We're going to turn to 2 Kings chapter 6, and we're looking at verse 16 and 17 today. And we're going to look at it in the King James Version. You know, this year's theme, Great Expectation Gets Great Results, could be called part two of last year's theme. You know, remember, if you're familiar with our ministry, last year's theme was your everything is his anything. And we encourage you to never give up until you get exactly what you want. In fact, a lot of us all had want lists and started checking them off. And we had so many people wrote in, talked about how many things that were on their want list that they saw came to pass because that was the promise of God. Jesus said you could ask for what you want and see it happen. But you must believe believe the truth of the one who sent, who God sent, that was Jesus Christ. Because great expectation is a link in the chain of God's design. And everything in the Bible is linked together from our salvation to healing to prosperity. You know, there's nothing from God that's, that isn't linked to his power to produce it. We are actually connected to God through the work of Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross changed everything. And because of what he did and when we accept him in our heart, we gain access to heaven. We can then hear God's voice. We can go boldly to the throne of grace and petition him, ask him for whatever it is we need in life. And we know that he's ready there, ready to help us, the Bible tells us, in our time of need. And, you know, by redemption, we are able to connect to every promise in the Word of God. We have access. It's like we have this golden key that God has given us, and it opens up all of His promises, and it all comes because of Jesus Christ. And all month, we've been studying about Elisha and the power of being able to see with the eyes of faith. That's not talking about seeing with your eyeballs or your natural vision. It's talking about seeing with spiritual eyes to see what's really going on in, this, in the life that we're in right now. It's a practical application. It's something that happened in the Old Testament, but it's something that they were able to see what God was doing in the spirit realm, that all, the, of all what was available to them at that day. But it also applies to us today because God is never, he's always the same. He's, the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he did it yesterday, he will do it today, and he'll continue to do it forever. So let's review our foundation scriptures for January. We're going to read 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16 and 17. And it says, in the King James Bible I'm reading, it says, And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. I love that. Such a powerful passage of scripture. Can you just imagine yourself have been on that mountain that day and you were with Elisha? And here you have this great man of God that you've been following around who does miracles. And, and you knew that he saw something you didn't see. And you were discouraged, discouraged and depressed because you thought you were about to die. And all of a sudden he says, Lord, and he prays for you. And he says, Lord, open his eyes. And he did. God opened this man's eyes, and he could all of a sudden see exactly what Elisha was seeing. You know, peace 
comes in your life when you can see what God is actually doing, what's at work on your behalf. And that's what happened that day. I, I don't know about you, but that inspires me to just, just realize that no matter what's going on, God is always at work if I will believe it and I trust him. Even if I don't see it in my natural, uh, with my natural eyes, I know that he is at work. You know, all this year we'll be focusing on this very real truth that there are more with us than with them. And that's why great expectation gets great results. And that short verse spoken by Elisha in the heat of an impossible situation holds a foundational truth of Christianity. You know, that basic truth that God is supernatural and he's, his supernatural power defies natural law. God, let me say that again. God is a supernatural power who can defy natural law. Why? Because he made the law. He can change it if he wants to. He can defy it. He can change. Just like he opened up the Red Sea, he blew in then and it went up so they could go on on dry land. Just like so many other things, that so miraculous things that you can read in the Word of God, he supersedes natural law when it's needed. Amen? Well, he has also created another plane of existence that sits right alongside of us every single day that we cannot see it. But it's just as sure as we exist, it also exists. And that's called the realm of the supernatural. And that's how we should, rem we should always be remembering that whenever we get attacked or when we confront an impossible situation. Let's think about that for a minute. For a minute. In our study, we're talking about right now, how should a person react in the heat of an impossible situation? If you've been in an impossible situation, how should you react? Think about that for a moment. And I've been in several impossible situations. I remember one in particular that was driving with Jesse to a, a revival meeting, and we were on the causeway, which is a, 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 a bridge over a lake that's like, I think, 26 miles long. And we were in this terrific t thunderstorm. It was, it was raining so heavy, we couldn't see the, the end of our hood on the car. And Jesse was concentrating to drive. And we were, we were driving to a revival meeting that was going to be in a tent outside. So and we, we didn't know what we were going to hit when we got there. But it was so intense, I was really concerned. And the Spirit of God rose up within me, and I just spoke to the rain. And I said, Shh. I, I commanded it to stop in the name of Jesus. And, just, and it instantly stopped. And Jess and I both just stopped and looked at each other because it's exactly what happened. But, you know, I didn't think about praying that before I actually did it. It was like a supernatural uh, force of faith that came upon me and told me, led me exactly what to say. I don't know what was ahead of us, whether it was a, some other kind of a, a disturbance or a tornado or whatever, but God, instantly it dried up and we were able to continue driving onto a, with a, without the rain, without, we could even shut the windshield wipers down. But that was a supernatural thing that God used and things changed when I prayed. And that can happen to you too. There's a realm of the super, supernatural that's at work in your life. And God will lead you and give you the words to pray that will change your situation as well. He does it all the time. And Elisha prayed for his servant's eyes to be open. And God can do that. He's done it for me and I know he'll do it for you. He is totally capable of blurring the line between what we do see and what we don't see so that we can see both. And it comes with growth. It comes with understanding and, and staying faithful. It may not come overnight, but when we stick with it, we can eventually see things. You probably encountered that yourself, or you, you'll think, you know, you'll look back on something that maybe happened years before, and you'll realize how God led you every step of the way. But while you were going through it, you didn't recognize it. But after you came through it, you can look back and say, my God, thank you. Thank you for all that you did to help me to get where I am today. God is so faithful. Let's turn to John chapter 20, verse 29. And we go, that's in the New Testament. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 29. 29. You know, although we know that God can open our eyes, we also know that it's better that we don't see and still believe and still get results with pure faith in him. Let's read John 20, verse 29. Now, this 
is a scripture that was written after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you know, at this point, he had already uh, gone to the cross. He had risen from the dead. He had revealed himself to Mary and some of the women, and he had revealed himself to some of the disciples in a room. But this comes to a point where there was someone who didn't see him. So let's read about that. John chapter 20, verse 29. And it says, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So this Jesus was talking to Thomas because Thomas had heard that Jesus had risen, but he hadn't actually seen him. So he told his other, the other disciples, unless I see him and put my hand in his side, I won't believe. So these are the words that Jesus spoke to Thomas when he revealed himself to him. So this was a powerful verse of scripture that Jesus gave us a promise that we, it's better if we don't see and believe. So remember that great expectation gets great results. Whatever the battle is against you, there are more with you than with them. You're winning because God and those who work for him in the spirit realm are on your side. And whatever you desire that is good can come to you because there are more with you than with them. And you don't have to see it, just like Thomas expected to see it, but Jesus told him, remember, it's better that you don't see. Because even though you don't see it, you know he is at work because he is real and he's, the spirit realm is even more real than what we see today. Amen? Well, remember that Jesus said to ask anything in his Father's name, and his Father will give it to you. And that means that it's coming. So you have to have strong faith in God and in yourself. You're not an accident waiting to happen. You are a success waiting to be birthed. Wow, isn't that awesome? Think about that for a minute. You're not an accident. You, you are here for a purpose. You are strategically placed right where you are by God for a purpose. And he has anointed you to help you to, to accomplish the dreams and the visions that he's planted it up in your heart. You know, every dream that you have comes to you in seed form, and it's spoken to God, by God, excuse me, to you. And so when, you, when it comes into your heart, it's important that you receive it and speak it out yourself. Why? Because your, the word changes your perspective, and it clears the path for your success. Your faith brings you what you need spiritually, physically, and financially. Faith's a powerful force. And, you know, success, I believe, is birthing in you right now, even as you hear this teaching. There's some births coming. Play. You've been actually impregnated, if you want to call it that, with God's word and with his promise. And it's in there now. And the more you feed, feed it with God's word and you pray and you believe, the, the stronger it will be. You won't ever, you're going to have to deliver one day. You know, everybody, you've seen people that are expecting a baby. They're not going to carry that baby for years and years and years. And no, there's a time that they're going to deliver. And in the same way, there's going to be a time factor that you're going to see the results that you need in your life. All you need to do is believe God, trust him, and continue to stay in his word. Find out different places in the word of God where your promise is and read it. Let it get into your own ears, into your own heart, let it come out of your own mouth and continue to declare it and expect it, and you will see the result that you need. I've put it into practice in my own life, and it didn't come overnight. Many things didn't come overnight, but it happened. It was just like in the natural. There's a lot of things that we're believing for, we're working towards that we have to do in the natural, whether it's an education, a goal, uh, some kind of things that you're working towards. If, even if you're physically building a house, it takes time takes time for those permits. Lots of things take time, but you don't give up. You keep moving forward. You keep putting one foot in front of the other foot. You keep doing what you know to do, and you trust God, and it all comes to pass. So no matter what happens today, tomorrow, or next year, you are a success going somewhere to succeed. And will all work out for your benefit if you keep the faith. If you do not give up. Because he's real. And in, in the spirit world that's around us is real. We've been talking about that all month long. The, the fact that the angels that were on the mountainside ready to go to battle with Elisha and all the Israeli army is, was a real thing of that day. 
Today we have just as much available to us in the realm of the Spirit, and we access that power of God every time we stick to his word and believe him in faith. So open your spiritual eyes today. Open your eyes and see with the eyes of faith that you can have whatsoever God says you can have. You can be whatsoever God has put on your heart to be. You can do whatsoever he has given you the burning passion to do. So go ahead and pray right now like Elisha prayed to open his servant's eyes. Say, God, open my eyes to see what's available to me. Open my eyes to see what what you have promised. Open my eyes to see the future that you have for me, the plan that you have for me. And you know, when you pray like that, God will open your eyes. He'll let you, and it may be something that even shakes you up a little bit. You, you, cause, cause in the natural, we, we often so often think so lowly of ourselves, but God looks at us with, with big expectations, great expectations. Then he wants to fill you. Let God fill your heart today with boldness to walk through your own life, knowing that he has got your back and he's on your side. Remember, there's no weapon. The Bible tells us this. No weapons formed against you can prosper when you know that there are more with us than with them. I love that verse of scripture. And you know what? You're a winner going somewhere to win. And you're a receiver going somewhere to receive. And so much more. I hope that you're learning something today. I want you to think about this question for a minute. What do you see now that you did not see before we started this study? Think about that for a minute. Is there something that your eyes have been open to? Some new realization that you have that maybe you didn't think about before? Maybe some new capability or something that may have been impossible before all of a sudden seems possible? You know, that's what faith does. It gives, it gives strength to, to your heart. It imparts hope to you that you can live for God, that you can see the promises of God come to pass in your own life, that your life can change for the better. You know, God loves you. He sent his son to redeem you and, to, and gave you access to every promise in the word because of the blood of Jesus. So don't shrink back. You deserve what you're believing for. Jesus paid the price so you could have it and do it. Remember, there are more with us than with them. Get that into your heart today and into your, your mind. Remember, Great expectation gets great results. Amen. Now, let's repeat our affirmations. We do this every week. This week, we have three of them, and we're going to say it together. Number one, I live by faith, act in love, and do what others won't, and God uses my spirit-led actions to turn bad situations around. He makes even my enemies to be at peace with me. Number two, let's say it together. All my good results are born in faith. Spirit, soul, and body, I ask Jesus for what I need and desire, like John 14, 13, and 14 says, and get results. His everything is my anything. Number three, my faith is lined up with God's supernatural power, not man's natural power, and that's why it's easy for me to have faith. I know that great expectation gets great results. Praise the Lord. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you that your presence is with us today and that you've helped us to grow and to get stronger. Lord, help us to see what others don't see, to see what's in the realm of the Spirit. Lord, to see the great future and the great hope that you have for us, the great promise that you have in your word. Lord, bless everybody that's watching. Lord, help us to grow stronger. And Lord, be until we come together again, Lord, let them be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, bless everything they set their hand to do, touch their bodies, strengthen their mind, and encourage them in the, in the Lord, in their spirits, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. God bless. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.